Another issue that women have in relationships is partners not doing the work to keep the relationship going. For my clients, women are always doing the work. They're always looking to see how they can make themselves better, how they can make the relationship more fun, more playful, increase the intimacy. Men, on the other hand, think that the relationship is okay. They maintain the status quo. And this is incredibly common in therapy and in lots of healing circles where the women come in, the men are the ones that are the issue. Why are they the issue? Well, a lot of men have been conditioned that their emotions aren't valuable, that they suppress, that they need to be stoic. In all of those scenarios, they end up closing their heart, which is something that the woman actually wants to feel. A woman wants to feel your emotions, and when you're able to do that, you can feel hers. And this isn't about trying to fix her emotions. This is about being present to what is alive for her in her body. What is she feeling? Is she feeling sad? Is she feeling happy? Is she feeling depressed? Is she feeling frustrated? Being with all of that and listening to all of that can radically transform a relationship. So why men tend to avoid therapies? It appears that men just prefer to avoid this in relationships because they just can't be bothered. That's what it appears to be. There's enough information out there now that points to that if there's high levels of criticism or the ratio of compliments to criticisms is low, the relationship is destined for failure. And it doesn't matter how you relay or re-educate this information, men still lag behind in being emotionally intelligent. And this plays out in the workforce as well. If you've got male bosses that assume that your emotions are invalid, and they don't listen to you, they don't take into account what's actually going on, and there's a good chance that you don't want to really be in that workplace. Because where we are headed as a civilization, emotional intelligence and being in contact with the emotions is a huge piece. If you're with a partner who doesn't speak to his emotions, whatever that is, or refuses to go to therapy, there's a very easy solution. Either you stay with him and you suffer, or you make another choice, you powerfully move on. You powerfully go into therapy yourself and you get the counseling and help that you need to powerfully walk out of that relationship. Because if you've got kids as well, they're being modeled this. Your children are seeing that your emotions to your husband or partner are invalid, which means that emotions are invalid. And emotions have a place in civilization. And if they're not valued or taken into account, then what are we doing? What are you doing? Most of your human experience will involve emotion. And if you don't want to honor that experience, you're also living a half-life. Half of you is dead. And this is at the root of depression, anxiety, and other idiopathic illnesses that have no cause, no root. So if you're suppressing your emotions and choosing to put them on the shelf, put them in a box or ignore them, they're going to erupt one day or they're going to make you sick. You have a powerful choice to move forward. Either live a healthy life honoring your emotions or live an unhealthy life by burying them.